Where are we right now economically in the world? They're having more and more admit we're really in a depression. What is the uh, banking cartel based in London and New York? What is their goal? What's happening to the euro? What's happening in Greece? What's coming here? Well, there's a long-term trend which is centered on certain people in the United Kingdom which is the desire to reduce the human population to what some people say two billion people, some say one. And uh, recently, the one is preferred. The policy of the so-called green revolution people, that is the anti-technology people, is precisely that. And for example, the worst case right now happens to be in Germany, where the green ch change is heading. And it means a disaster for the total population of Germany. It's a weaker in France where they do have a dependency upon nuclear power. Uh, Italy does not yet have nuclear power. They once did, but it was taken away from them. So we're in that kind of situation. But the worst of it is that at this point, with this president, the, who is nothing but a British puppet, and I do, there's no exaggeration whatsoever. If one knows his... Uh, affinities for the Brit British royal family. And for they created him. How do you think all the money was cooked up under very suspicious circumstances to overwhelm the presidential campaign with him, with money behind him? And I, my view is some of the people using this money should have gone to prison because the tactics are being used by spreading a fund which is coming largely from drug money and similar kinds of sources, and splitting up into little pieces, and then putting the pieces into the campaign of the presidential candidate, they overwhelmed with sheer money, overwhelmed the legitimate campaign, which was being run for the president. Now, on the basis of his debt to the British, who put him into office inside the United States with this flood of money, he now actually has got control over the presidency. There are people in the United States, particularly older people who are less political and more, uh, shall we say, institutional, who understand this. And we are prepared to dump this bum from office. Now we have the perfect grounds for doing so. We had a ground under the 25th Amendment on him earlier. It should have been exercised, it was not. Now we've caught him in an outrage, outrage of an impeachable offense against the United States in a fraudulent policy on warfare in Libya. We have him there. There's some weaklings in the United States who are afraid to close in on this guy. But I know if he is not thrown out of office very soon, and I mean in the weeks immediately ahead, this United States cannot survive the kinds of conditions which we're going into in the month of July doesn't mean we're going to collapse in July, but it means we're going through a process which will collapse somewhere along the summertime. We're already so, seeing bizarre flash mobs and riots popping up all over the United States right now. That's there, well, you have two of them. One has like Twitter. Twitter operates a riot-creating operation. Do it just with its normal operations. But behind the, what Twitter does as just an organization... Twitter as an organization is control, control from the top. And you have a generation of youths who have a very poor orientation in life. It wasn't their fault. It was this is all intentional. The intention is to reduce the world population from over 7 billion people to one in the shortest possible time. If you understand that, then you know what's going on. If you don't understand that, you really don't know what's going on. This, the point is, you're looking at a whole system, and the system was born with the founding of the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire, the original one, collapsed, but then it was revived as Byzantium. That collapsed. It was revived as a crusader system. That collapsed. And then after a whole series of wars in Europe, it was established as a new empire with William of Orange, who were, carried the flag of the new Venetian party from the Netherlands into England and Ireland, and did a lot of killing, but his, his outcome of his actions with the uh, Seven Years' War, which concluded in 1763, 
established the British Kingdom as an imperial power on the planet, including its control of, of India, its control over what Nova Scotia, Canada, and so forth. So that this was the fight we All right, stay there, state. stay there, Lyndon LaRouge. Let's come back and finish up with that key area on the other side. Uh, please continue. Lyndon LaRouge is our guest, joining us via video Skype from Germany. Uh, you were getting into their their plan for world population uh, reduction. Um, I mean, look at California going into a total implosion, 30 plus percent unemployment, even 60 minutes in an analysis and admitted that last year. Their answer is ram through a 20 plus percent carbon tax on California. I mean, if that isn't proof of the economic genocide, what is uh, Lennon LaRouche? Well, that's what you're getting. You're getting that there is real genocide and it's intentional. And the Obama administration is an instrument of that policy of genocide. If you look at the policies which are uttered by the Obama administration itself, as apart from many other sources inside the United States, you find that only Obama and what he represents and his immediate cronies are the people who are behind in the health care and other fields to increase the killing rate of what is considered an excessively large U.S. population. So we're not involved in a political quarrel. We're involved in an existential issue. Are we going to be human or are we going to be cannibals? That's what we are. If you go with Obama, you're for the cannibal class. And that's what we're headed for. Is that why they put him in? Because he's black and they thought that would give him political cover because it's admitted that the carbon taxes proposed at Copenhagen would kill at least a billion people if they were implemented within five years. And, and that was just the first rollout. And, and they told the third world, hey, go for this. We're going to tax the West, give it to you. And then they got the treaty and it was right at double the taxes that the West would pay on people making less than two dollars a day. It was a death sentence. I know. I know. I know you know, but I mean, how do we stop these people? They're, they're, they're madmen. They are criminals. And we have to understand that. We have to establish our government again free of the Obama syndrome. And also the George you know, W. Bush Jr. syndrome, which is almost as bad, not quite as bad as Obama. What is but your view of the political field right now uh, in the United States? Pardon me? What is your view of the, of the political candidates? I think what we have now is we have among some senators and among members of the of the House of Representatives, and in terms of the elite institutions of the gubernatorial system, has a lot of good people in it. We have the ability, and we're pushing for the Glass-Steagall re reenactment, and it's a very serious and it's a growing movement right now. We're moving to reinstall Glass-Steagall. That'll change the whole game. We in the United States, with our government, as long as we control it, has the capacity to create credit. We can put the United States back to work. So it's policy. They could turn this around anytime they wanted to, but they don't want that to happen. What happens if we don't? I mean, couldn't we impeach Obama? There's more than one way to skin a cat. Uh, I mean, couldn't we go after Obama for the war powers issue? I mean, Ron Paul was on with us two days ago. He said it's absolutely he's impeachable. He's impeachable on that ground. He's impeachable because he's insane also. And he couldn't be what he is if he weren't insane. This man is a mental case of a certain type. He thinks we he, have 57 states. He doesn't even know the ages of his daughters now. Yeah, there's news today asking if Obama was cra is starting to have mental problems. He, well, he's crazy. But he's in it, like, like the uh, famous Nero, Emperor Nero. He's got the same syndrome of the Emperor Nero in psychologically. But the point is he's used as a tool by the British monarchy personally. That is, he is not an agent of some conspiracy. He's an agent of one conspiracy, an agent of the British monarchy. All right, we're back and in one minute. Uh, Lionel LaRouge, our guest. Stay with us. Lionel LaRouge is our guest, and uh, everything he's saying is accurate from the globalist own statements, the Anglo-American establishment, what their goal is, and things are accelerating very, very quickly. Uh, Lionel LaRouge, I'm concerned about false flag terror because they've got uh, reports out today. Kurt Nemo's got one at Infowars.com. Napolitano warns Europeans that Gaddafi's 
giving weapons to al-Qaeda. They're about to strike. They've got the federal goon force, TSA, now going on the streets. And I see them needing a political diversion uh, ahead of the economic uh, calamities that are accelerating to, to stage some events and then claim that foreigners did it as a pretext to take liberty and to legitimize all these new wars. What, what are, from your research, some of the tricks uh, that uh, the uh, ruling class may use to try to block the people from removing them from power? Well, let's take the case of 9-11 as a good example of exactly how this whole system works still today, including that kind of, that kind of problem you referred to. What happened was is that the British system, to a certain branch of its operations, together with the Saudi kingdom, set up an operation, a secret operation, which they would take oil prices in the, in the Gulf, at the price Gulf prices, then move it up to the, uh, the coast of, of Europe, northern, and then they would put, sell it on the market at a European price, which is much above the Saudi price. They would, however, list the oil delivered at, this, at the Saudi Gulf price. The, this created a vast fund, the largest available fund for dirty operations, military and others, which existed in the world at that time. This funding was used for what was called 9-11. And the whole operation was based on this, the 9-11 operation. Now, this was well known. The evidence of the direct relationship of the Saudi ambassador to Washington and his involvement in recruiting and backing and funding some of the pilots who actually flew those planes was conclusive evidence which was buried under the pressure of the uh, then the Bush administration. But that is the truth. The truth was never told publicly, though many of us knew it. The evidence existed. We knew it. Other people knew it. But it was never presented in the press. Even the people who are on the commission, who were investigating precisely this line of investigation, were pressed not to open their mouths. The same was practically a national secret. But it was the alliance of the Saudi kingdom and this faction inside the British system, which funded, directed, and created the 9-11 incident. And that's a fact we have to remember. We're in this kind of mess because the, the Bush administration obtained dictatorial powers over the presidency and over the Congress through the terror caused by this event. And that's the thing that's still harassing us today. And we, we should get the record clear. Now, the key thing here is we have a bunch of congressmen, good ones, that are normal members of Congress. But to the extent that they're fragmented and are not working together on a common cause, they are not effective in dealing with a president who is rotten and an enemy of the United States. Well, Mr. LaRouge, we would love to have you up if you can do it again. And you said it's such a critical time in the next few weeks to continue. We are just flat out of time. But but bottom okay. line, uh, bottom line, you're saying 9-11 is a type of inside job? Yeah, it was a total inside job. And it involved Bush all over the place. Remember, the whole family was there in Texas at the time that a Bin Laden was functioning up in, in Mr. York. LaRouche, let me, I'm going to get George Humphrey in here, but let me do two minutes with you on the other side. Can you do that? Pardon me? Two minutes. Uh, uh, I'll yeah. do two more minutes with us on the other side, okay? I'm going to come back and finish up with this. This is too big. It's talking about the global plan for world government population reduction, the British Empire through the corp, uh, corporate uh, system, uh, corporatocracy, the kleptocracy. But, sir, you were talking about 9-11 being a total inside job, and, and so you're saying you are concerned in the geopolitical uh, calculation um, that they may stage new events as their flagging system goes forward. Can you finish with that and then your statement that you got cut off making about we've got good Congress people, but... Well, the, the Glass-Steagall Act will unite enough of members of Congress to create a force which will be able to face up to the threat of the Obama administration. If we start succeed in pushing the Glass-Steagall Act through at least one house of the uh, Congress, we will then have crippled the Obama dictatorship, and that will lead to the elimination of him from the presidency. 
under those conditions, a American people thinking they've got their nation back after all these years will be able to mobilize themselves as an organized force and take the measures needed to save our nation. We can do it. We need a sense of the courage and unity among enough of our people to unite around the Congress, around the right people in the Congress, to, as a force of government, get our country back now. If we don't do it, we're going to lose it. So now we've got to mobilize by the best political choice of a strategy. But, but do you agree with me, sir, that the staged terror attack is one of the dangerous cards up the sleeve? Because from everything I see engaging the preparatory brainwashing where they're saying terrorists are about to hit, when they hit, give your rights up, we're your protectors, wars are good, police state is good. I see them prepping the mind, the public mind, you know, gal lighting, uh, pre preparing the ground uh, for new stage terror. Do you have any comments? It's absolutely correct. The, if, if we restore a sense of unity among a majority of members of the U.S. Congress, I guarantee you we can win this fight and win it in short order. That's what we have to do. But we're getting close to uh, a point where it's it's going to get. Uh, I mean, if things don't change in the next few months, and and and, and uh, I'm then, trying, I, I'm out there to organize this process. We need it. I'm an old man. I should be president, but I'm too old to even consider the job. But I am prepared to commit myself fully to this objective as a lifelong objective. Lynn LaRouche, thank you so much for spending so much time with us. We're uh, very, very thankful for your uh, insight and uh, your perspective. Thank you.